Thank you very much. Step into your proposition. Now let's move on to the closing half by inviting the member of the
Meaning, some people in the world may not know some no freaking way still, but some use it all the time already. Yeah. For example, in the Philippines, some people out there, not gonna name work which place, still use Salungkwet, but a lot of people use monoblock already, ladies and gentlemen, especially in that part of the world. We think there is no way to actively inform these people, yeah. to actively make these people know, ladies and gentlemen, that these kinds of things already exist without the governing body and this kind of governance that exists in status quo. But before you ask, your definition of governance is ridiculous. We're simply giving information, Here. but you're not necessarily governing that Here. kind of language. Um, okay, when you say govern, it doesn't mean you'll slap people, ladies and gentlemen, when you don't use it. Here. It means you arbitrate and you try to see Here. which language are already being used Here. and can be used in specific circumstances. So unless you could give me the official meaning of governance Here. and Here. tell me if you will be for not using Tagalog, ladies and gentlemen, you are not allowed to point me in this debate again. But they went to the one of my argument, ladies and gentlemen. What I want to say is that the governing body is the promoter of equalization among different phases of evolution that fosters effective communication among people in a given society. Because we think, ladies and gentlemen, effective communication is important. The framing is this. This debate doesn't happen when you only have one culture and one language and you stay in that place. Yeah. This debate happens across cultures, yeah. across nations, ladies and gentlemen, and across people. Because that's the point in time where these things really matter. Because if you're just, you know, in Naga, for example, you can use, you know, Naga, the land Naga language all you want, and people won't care because you understand each other. But if people from Naga would want to go to Manila or the United States or to an international convention, ladies and gentlemen, that's where the debate lies. That's why we need, ladies and gentlemen, these kinds of arbitration. We think on the first level, language, when you're already in a place and point in time where there are multicultural, multicultural people, ladies and gentlemen, become symbols of power and status, ladies and gentlemen. It becomes sometimes an indication of your level of education. It becomes sometimes the level of your income, ladies and gentlemen, and the status you possess in that given community. We think in two ways, ladies and gentlemen, these bodies help out. Okay. Number one, when people use salungkwet in a meeting, these bodies are there to say that they're not stupid people by your name. They were just those people who didn't know yet that these words exist. We think these people, the body says that salungkwet is not stupid, but rather came from this word, etc., etc. But secondly, ladies and gentlemen, these bodies provide people who are deeply paced to adjust and create a choice to use a new word because they're now informed that that's the best way to communicate, ladies and gentlemen. And we think absolutely that's the value we want to provide in closing government. Effective communication can only be done when there's a body that arbitrates the pace by which these languages evolve, and that's something that is exclusive in the governing characterized by closing government.